guys and welcome back to another All Heart video. Today I thought it would be fun to go through some Montessori inspired activities that you can DIY at home. I know that we've talked about the price of a lot of Montessori activities, products, toys, um, and we know that they can be a bit pricey, but that doesn't mean that we aren't able to recreate some of these at home or at least activities that basically work on perfecting those skill points just as well as any actual Montessori tool. So I thought it'd be fun to kind of explore a few options that we're able to do at home. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And with that, let's go ahead and get started on the very first activity. So let's start off with one of the more fun sensory activities, and these are probably my children's favorites. So the first one, as you can see here, are just a container of lentil beans. And I love the green lentils just because they're so vibrant in color and they're so soft in texture that my children just really love kind of uh, getting their hands in there. But as you can see on a separate little basket, I do keep all of the little, um, the little trays, the little containers, the little scoopers, the little uh, wooden tongs so that they're able to kind of pick one at a time. But this is just such a fun little activity that you can fill with basically any product that you have at home. It could be um, different colored beans, different colored lentils, rice, macaroni, anything that your children uh, would basically gravitate towards as far as sensory activity is going to be a lot of fun. Now, the next little sensory activity is something as easy as placing some paint inside of a Ziploc bag. Just make sure that your Ziploc bag is incredibly sealed because if not, then it will get pretty messy. But especially if you're just using two primary colors like red and yellow, as soon as they're able to mix those colors, they're going to see that they create a whole new color, which is orange. So it's just such a fun way for them to explore the color wheel and the different colors that they're able to make when they mix. And especially if you have younger babies and younger toddlers, it's just so much fun for them to kind of squish the paint around and move it around with their hands. So it's another really great sensory activity. The next one is obviously a favorite, it is Play-Doh. And we just happened to make some Play-Doh this last week and we made them with all the colors, all the colors of the rainbow. And I love being able to use different types of cookie cutters, especially something like this with the numbers. We've got the shapes. So it's just such a fun, active way for them to explore learning through an activity like this. So instead of them having to like write out their numbers or you know um, draw out their shapes, this is a fun way for them to also learn those same things. And it's just a lot more of a hands-on activity. So something like this is very easy for you to do. So if you are looking on how to create Play-Doh, I do have a very good recipe. Um, I can go ahead and make a video on that. If you guys are interested, make sure that you suggest it in the comments down below. And I'll make sure to make a video on that. I know that there's a lot of different recipes that you could find on YouTube. I have tried so many of them and this one is the one that works really, really well for us. So I would be more than happy to share that with you guys. So the next sensory activity, I actually forgot to just take a clip of, so I'm just gonna show you real quick, but it's moon sand. And this type of sand is so soft and it smells so good because the only, th uh, the only two ingredients that you need for this are baby oil and flour. So that is the only thing. So your babies end up smelling so good after they end up playing with something like this. And the sand is just so incredibly soft that it's just so nice and you know pliable and they just have so much fun being able to play with something like this. So let me go ahead and show you. I keep it in this bin. I'm actually thinking of switching it out to the bins that I showed you earlier, just because this one's a bit bulky and big and the other ones I can actually stack. But this is what it looks like and I have a few of their little tools in here, but the powder is just so incredibly soft and just like sand, it does fall apart. But the nice thing about this is that as soon as you're able to kind of mold it, it does actually keep its shape. So something like this is very, very easy for you to make at home and it will create hours and hours of entertainment for your little ones. 
Having my daughter identify which is a fruit and which is a vegetable is another little fun activity and she keeps this in her little Waldorf play stand when she's deciding that she wants to cook some food. So this is a fun little project for her. Coloring is another activity that is very easy for you to set up for your child. All that you would really need is a few crayons and a tray along with some blank paper or um, you know, colored construction paper or if you prefer just using coloring books, um, maybe just cutting out one of the sheets so that they're able to focus on just one at a time. Um, but this is just such an easy activity for you to set out for your child. Uh, the other thing would be watercolors. My son is just such a big fan of using his watercolors to create whatever image comes to mind. And a lot of times we like to pair it with other activities that we're working on and that way it's kind of a project that we work on together. So let's say for example, if we are working on science and we are working on the different parts of a flower, then perhaps for this watercolor activity, um, we'll have him paint out a type of flower and then kind of list out all of the different parts of a flower. So something like that is very easy for you to do and very easy for you to set up. Another way to entertain your child at home would be just having a chalkboard with some chalk and an eraser. Um, something like that is just so easy, very inexpensive. We happen to have a smaller one like you see my son using here that we can kind of transport between rooms. But we also have this larger one that you can see just behind me. Um, and that one is a magnetic blackboard. And we like to use that one for projects as well. So something like this is very easy to kind of get your hands on. You could even DIY it just like I did this one. You could just get some blackboard paint and paint it on whatever surface you are looking at painting. And within a couple hours of it being dry, you are able to use it. So something like this is again, a very inexpensive, easy project for you to do and create a fun little activity for your little ones. So if you are a little bit more familiar with Montessori, you will recognize this next little project and it is just the little spice shaker with the little sticks. Now there are different size spice shakers. I do have a larger one where, we're, where we are able to fit like the larger size little um, cake pop sticks. And then we also have this smaller one uh, where my daughter is able to just kind of fit in the little sticks and all I did um, was cut off the edges so that they weren't sharp and it's easier for her to kind of um, shift through the little holes and for your younger toddlers if you don't want them working with something that small then we can use the strainer and all I did was use the little pipe cleaners and she was able to pick out her colors and then she just kind of shifts them through the larger size hole. So this is the perfect activity for a younger toddler and then she, they can kind of work their way up to working things through the smaller size holes of the spice shakers. So the locks and keys are somewhat of a newer activity for my son. I wanted to include more locks that would create different challenges. So some, as you can see in the tray that I created for my son, there are ones where he has to kind of rotate his fingers on the dial to be able to kind of figure out the combination and then be able to open up the lock. And he has to kind of turn it to the right. He has to turn it to the left. He's also got other ones where he has to kind of rotate just his thumb and use his finger to get the number combination correctly. Then I have another one that actually includes a word puzzle so that he has to kind of switch the dial over to the correct letters in order to form a word and then he's able to unlock it that way and then I have a few normal ones which is just the key in the lock where he has to turn it and then open the lock but I wanted to kind of create a sort of custom made lock activity for him because the ones that I found online were a, a bit too simple but again just kind of figure out in what developmental stage your son or daughter is at and then you can kind of decide which ones you really want to go with. But this is just such a fun activity. It provides really a lot of engagement and it is one of my son's favorites. Folding towels is such a fun activity for your child and it's something that you're able to make at home with just some older towels that you can kind of rip up into a shape of a square. 
Now what I did with mine, and I've showed you this before, was I drew out the lines so that it's easier for them to know where the folds are supposed to be. So this is something that my son enjoys kind of pulling out and being able to fold. And even when we're doing laundry at home, he's the one that helps me fold all the towels because now he recognizes all of these different folds. This is something that's a little bit more challenging for my daughter, but the easier ones like the triangles, she is able to follow the lines and fold it in half. So it's something that, it's an activity that they're kind of, that they are going to be able to grow with. And it's just such a fun little activity that you're able to do at home with materials that you already have on hand. So something like this would be another really good activity, especially if you have a whole bunch of socks. Um, I only grabbed these two sets real quick for uh, the video. But um, it's perfect for them to be able to color match and also just to kind of learn how to fold their socks. So this is kind of the perfect little activity especially if you've just finished doing laundry. Transferring is another little activity that you're able to do with any type of product that you have at home. When my toddler was a bit younger, and even now, she just loved being able to put things from one container to another. And like I said, you're, you are able to use any type of materials. A lot of times she would fill one of them up with shells and she would just transfer it over to the next one. Sometimes she would pick them one by one and other times she would use the little tongs to transfer, especially when she got a little bit older like she is now. She does like utilizing the little tongs. A piggy bank is another one of those things that I'm sure you have at home, and it's perfect for them to learn that pinching motion with their fingers, and that really helps them strengthen their little fingers, especially just before they start learning how to write. So this is the perfect little activity that they're able to do at home. So this is a really easy cutting activity that I created for my son. And all I did was lay out some strips of white construction paper along with his little childproof scissors. And I just cut the paper into little strips. And that way he's just able to pick it up and cut the little strips down. And it's just a really nice, easy, repetitive project for him to really master those cutting skills. So a glue activity is another little project that they can do during their arts and crafts, just setting out things that they are able to glue onto paper or perhaps onto different surfaces, but just laying out all the materials ahead of time um, will make it a lot easier for them to kind of pick and choose what they want to glue. So for example, during our Christmas activity, I know that we were gluing things onto our pre-made little Christmas trees. So I had like little puff balls, I had little stickers, I had um, the little pipe cleaners. So just having these little materials all cut up and ready to go with their glue on the side and just showing them how they're supposed to do it first is just a fun activity for them to learn how to glue things properly. Color sorting is another really fun activity for toddlers. And you can do it basically with anything that has that arrangement of colors. So for my daughter, I have a lot of different colored felt balls in all of the rainbow colors. And all I did was sort them out into different baskets and I would place either a little construction paper tab in the same color so that she she's able to know which basket to put the corresponding little felt ball. And other times I would just place one felt ball in each and that way she was able to know which corresponding color was supposed to go in which. But it's a really fun activity for them to learn how to identify all of their colors. It's also really good for their hand and eye coordination. And it's just such a tangible material that they're able to work with with their hands by picking them up, by touching them, feeling them, especially because they're felt balls it does have that sensory quality to them. So it's a lot of fun for them to be able to play with something like this and also learn to identify all of their colors. Being able to make some printouts are also a very easy activity to be able to do. All I did was print out these different shapes onto this page and I was able to cut out these little felt pipe cleaners into little strips and that way they're able to place them on the corresponding shapes. It's also a great way for them to learn how many sides make up a particular shape. As far as the circle is concerned, I would have them use either the longer felt 
pipe cleaner and that way they're able to recreate it into a circle or we could use like a rubber band. A pouring activity is another fun way to for them to work on their practical life skills. Now I've set up a tray specifically in an area of our playroom and they also have an area inside of our house where they're able to work on those pouring skills. So all I did was set up a little shelf like this and they've got their little container here and I always have it filled up with water so that they're able to pour it into the cup. Along with this set, I also have a baster so that they're able to bring the water in from this cup and transfer it over to this one. And then they also have this. Uh, this one's a little bit more challenging for my daughter to use, so my son likes to use this and transfer water that way. But just a fun little pouring activity. You know, children love to play with water, so having something like this is a lot of fun for them. And again, it's a necessary skill that they're going to have to learn. So it's nice for them to be able to practice those skills in the playroom. So when I was trying to teach my son greater than and less than, all I did was print out a set of numbers one through 10. And then on the side, I was able to draw up the plus minus and greater and less than sign. So he was able to use the little mouth image to show me the larger number and also to show me the number that was smaller. So it was just a fun way for the him to be able to learn greater than and less than. Setting up an activity for your child where they're able to learn different sizes um, is, is also a really nice, useful little project for you to do. I like so. to use a lot of our Holtz Tiger toys and a lot of our wooden animals. So as you can see here, I would kind of set these out for them and I would ask my daughter, which one is bigger? and which one is smaller. And then she would point to this one for the bigger one, and then she would point to this one for the smaller one. The same thing would go with um, corresponding figures like this one. So this one we know is mama bear, and this one is baby bear. So I would ask her again the same, which one is the bigger one, which one is the smaller one? But like I said, you're able to use any type of material so long as there is a good size difference for your child to be able to tell easily which one is bigger and which one is smaller. And that way they will understand that concept very, very well. So when my daughter is working on recreating all of the parts of your body and your face, like your eyes, eyebrows, nose, mouth, ears, um, I was just able to create this printout and I would just give her a set of materials that she was able to grab a lot of like the loose parts. In this case, I used the, the felt pipe cleaners just because they were handy, but I would set up a li little tray with different things that she's able to do that she is able to use to recreate a face. And this also helps with being able to identify emotions. So if you know, she's trying to show me a sad face or an angry face or a happy face. It's just a fun activity to do. So creating a sensory mystery bag is a lot of fun, especially for my older son who is five. So I like to keep a lot of these little baggies on hand just for these activities. And I'll set up a couple bags in their little shelf work. And so all it is, is I've filled it up with a few different materials that he would have to reach in there fish out and then identify while his hand is in here. So like this one, I can feel is one of our little eggs. So you, he can tell by the shape, he's able to get that sensory element in there and then he's able to figure out what exactly it is. So as a different example, I can feel this figure here and I know that it's one of our little wooden stars. So this is a fun little activity that you can do and you can fill it up with whatever you want. You could put a key in here, you could put a lock in here, you could put different shapes in here and it's just a nice way for them to be able to identify what is inside the bag. So this is an easy activity for you to do all I did was utilize some stickers and I wrote out the numbers on the bottom and with the clothespin, they're able to identify how many little pictures they see at the top of the slot. Another easy printout you can do is for them to learn their opposites. So just be able to add the opposite of a particular picture. So like hot and cold, happy, sad, fast, slow, open and closed. So I was able to create this Montessori activity out of this little wooden tray that I found at Michael's. So I actually have one and it's this one right here and it's got the little wooden dowel so that they're able to kind of trace out 
and learn how to write out all of their letters or their numbers or whatever it is that they're working on onto the sand here. And then with this, they're able to kind of shift it back. Now you are able to recreate this activity without having to purchase something like that. And like I said, I was able to find something like this at Michael's and um, it is just deep enough to have a um, good size layer of sand on here. And all you would need is, you can even just use a pencil for them to be able to trace out the a letter or number onto this little board. And I believe this was only like two or three dollars, something like that, but the activity would work the same way. So this is a nice, a uh, little DIY that basically functions the exact same way and it's a lot less expensive. Sensory shakers are also another fun thing that you're able to do for your toddler. Um, and all you really need are paper towel rolls or toilet paper rolls and I have a couple here. And I usually have my son or daughter color them and draw on them first and then I will go ahead and cut them, especially if it's this size, I'll go ahead and cut them into two sizes, one for my daughter, one for my son, and just make sure that you fill it with materials like beans or rice or something that would create a sound when you're able to turn this you know, left and right and make sure that they are covered on both sides. I'll usually use like um, either like a Ziploc bag that I've taped around these sides or I will use like a baking type paper and then I'll use a rubber band so that way it's nice and secure, but then they're able to shift it back and forth and create a sound. So something like this, I know you have lying around and it's very easy for you to do. And again, it's a really fun sensory and auditory activity for your little ones. So drawing out a pattern for them to be able to follow is another fun little activity for them to do. And it's great for their hand and eye coordination. So all I'm utilizing is just this little basket and some of our grab it loose toys. And all that my daughter would have to do would be follow the little pattern all the way around. So it's just a fun little activity for her to do. It keeps them entertained and um, she's able to basically use whatever she wants in order to follow the pattern all the way around and create a really nice mosaic picture. Now it doesn't have to be this design, it could be any design that you want. This is just the one that she was just able to do uh, not too long ago, so I kept it to show you guys. Another fun thing that you can do, and this you can do with any object. I'm just utilizing these because they're here, so it's easier for me but when my daughter is working on her numbers. So I'll just set out the baskets just like this. I'll place the numbers here, and then she's able to put the corresponding number of felt balls into each little container. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the same color. If I'm working more on a color sorting activity, then I'll have her do just the same colors. So I'll say, let's place four of the yellow ones. And then, you know, she'll place four of the yellow ones in here and so on and so forth. But for this activity, I'm only concerned about the amount of numbers and having her put the corresponding number of little felt balls into the little trays. Another fun thing that you're able to do with a lot of these felt balls is create a pattern for them. So I would set out a predisposed pattern like this. It would be red, yellow, green, red, yellow, green. And then my daughter or son will go ahead and recreate it. So they would place the red, the yellow, and the green and so on and so forth. You can also do this with dot paints. So I would get the dot paints in the red, the yellow and the green and that way it's a lot more hands-on for them and they're able to kind of use that wrist motion to rotate the wrist, apply that pressure for the dot paint and um, be able to follow the pattern that way. And that's it, you guys. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you guys do end up recreating some of these little Montessori-inspired DIY projects, make sure that you tag us at All Heart Social Media and make sure that you comment down below which activity was your favorite. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button, make sure to subscribe, and remember to ring that notification bell so that you are notified of when I next post a video. I do post videos at least twice a week, sometimes three times a week. So I'll see you guys very, very soon. Bye.